Welcome back to another lesson for N2 Electrical Trade Theory. And don't forget to hit that like and to share these videos. Now in module six, I'm gonna break up the videos into three parts just to make it a little bit shorter. In the first part in unit 6.1, we'll be taking a look at DC machines and the total module makes up 10% of the national curriculum. Now it's important to note that for DC machines, the construction of a motor and the construction of a generator is exactly the same. And therefore we refer to the term machine in this unit. Now here is a two pole machine and it's important to be able to draw and label a two pole machine for your national exam. The first main part is the yoke, the field pole, the field coil, also known as the field windings, the pole shoe, the armature assembly. Let's take a look at, at this in more detail. Now the construction of the stationary system consists of the main frame, also known as the yoke, which forms the outer casing and protects the inner parts. The terminal box is on top of the yoke and that is where the electrical connections are made. The field pole, the main function of the field pole is to strengthen the magnetic field and it also helps to hold the field windings in place. The field coils, also known as the field windings, is part of the stationary field system. And the main function of the field coils is to produce magnetic field when they carry current. The pole shoe, the main function of the pole shoe is to distribute magnetic flux over the air gap. The air gap is the gap between the stationary part and the rotating part. The main function, the air gap must be large enough to prevent friction, but small enough to prevent energy loss. Now let's take a look at the construction of the rotating system. And we're only looking at the construction. In the later parts of the videos, we'll be taking a look at DC motors and DC generators. Here we have the armature assembly, which is the rotating part and consists of the shaft, the bearings, the armature core, the armature windings, and the commutator. The armature core is made of thin slices of laminated sheets, and this is to prevent the effects of eddy currents. And the main function of the armature core is to produce torque. The commutator made out of copper, insulated by a material called mica, divided up into many segments. Now the main function of the commutator is to allow for electrical connection, to allow for current to flow between the rotating part and the stationary part, and converts AC to DC. Mica is used to insulate the segments of the commutator, and the reason why it is a good insulating material and can withstand high temperature. The wedge-shaped segments are there to prevent the segments from moving out of position due to centrifugal force. Now for bearings, the main function of bearings is to prevent friction, and we get two types of bearings, ball bearings and roller bearings. For brushes, there are two main types of brushes. We get carbon and we get graphite. For carbon brushes, the reason why manufacturers like to use carbon is that carbon is cheap, hard wearing, it can withstand high temperature, and the dust acts as a lubricant. Here we have the armature conductors, which are slotted inside the armature core, and that forms part of the rotating system. So just to wrap that up, we have the uh, field windings, which is the stationary system, and we have the armature conductors, which is the rotating system. Right, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.